Hello and welcome back to the channel. I'm going to try something different this episode and instead of just trying to do one little thing, I'm just going to get as much done as I can. I have the Holley Terminator X. We got to wire this thing. I've got the whole fuel system. I've got a bunch of PTFE fuel line that we need to hook up. I've got flex fuel sensor and all kinds of crazy stuff. I've even got a detachable steering wheel. And I think that would be real fun to start with. Stick around. So here's the issue. They call me Girth Brooks because I can just barely fit in this car. That was a little easier than what I'm used to, but I think it's because the car's up off the ground. When this thing's at ride height, I can barely get in it. Um, plus the steering wheel's all jacked up anyway, so let's just pull it out, put the Motion Race Works column and removable wheel in and see how much better that makes it. That's better. Yep. Yeah. Ah. Now I've got a whole mess of wiring I gotta figure out. Whatever. Oh, so much better. So this is gonna work out great, but we need a turn signal. That's where this comes in. So we have to start with this column collar. This gives the turn signal switch something to grab hold of. And of course these are Allen's and I don't have an Allen. So how do you sort your Allen keys? Got them. So we put the collar around the steering shaft. We'll leave that loose, open this guy up. Oh, that's cool. So this is just a three position toggle switch with this billet piece on top of it. So if this ever fails, it's super easy to replace. That's pretty neat. Just thread these 
into the collar. Okay, now put our steering wheel on and figure out where we want the turn signal. I think about right there. Perfect for me. Now the real question is, how much is that gonna interfere with me, my big butt getting in and out of this car? I am really not used to things going this smooth on Meemaw. Good job Motion Race Works. This was perfect. I'll put a link in the description for all of this. So all the new steering components are installed. Everything looks like it's going to work out great. So excited about that. Next step, I want to work on fuel. One thing I don't think I've shared before is I intend to use the original gauges. If you're familiar with these cars, there's only two, the speedometer and the gas gauge, and the gas gauge doesn't work. So I'm going to show you how to fix that. So I'm going to try real hard not to burn the shop down, uh, but the sending units in here, we got we to gotta pull this guy out. And there's just a lock ring, this little ring in the middle. Just get your screwdriver and tap counterclockwise till it comes out. Shoot, almost there already. Simple as that. So this particular sending unit is supposed to read zero to 90 ohms, zero being empty, 90 being full. As you can see, it's going nuts. This thing, this thing is just. So let me hook up a new one. Here's the new unit. Let's see, we're at 5.8 ohms at empty. Yeah, 95 all the way full. This new sending unit should take care of the gas gauge issue. And that particular sending unit is just some Chinese crap from Amazon. We're gonna use the original feed as the return. So I can get rid of this sock. So now when gas comes back from the motor, it'll go in what used to be the out and just shoot out down here, which is fine. What is supposed to be the return will need to be plugged, probably just TIG that closed or something. And if you're wondering how I'm going to get fuel out of the tank to the motor, that's where it gets sketchy. I'm going to modify the original gas tank because I think that would be pretty cool. They make retrofit tanks. I do not want a fuel cell. It's important to me that we continue to fill the fuel tank from behind the license plate. I always thought that was really cool. So what we're going to do is use this. This is a bulkhead fitting from Aeromotive. 
that should allow us to drill a hole in the original tank, poke this guy through it, and that gives us an 8AN male that we can just screw right into. The only problem is there's still about two gallons of gas in this tank and I don't want to burn the shop down, so I'm going to go drill the hole outside. Anybody want to place a bet as to whether or not I catch myself on fire, now would be the time. You know, it's the first time I've ever used a step bit. That was incredible. Make sure this fits. And it does. Excellent. I'm just gonna let this gas tank. How dare you? Oh Lord. There's more gas in there than I thought. Let me find a bucket. Well, you can't hardly see. But there are a few little metal shavings, so I'm gonna fish those out with a magnet. Look, I don't care if you believe me or not, but I just fished this thing through the hole on my first attempt. I just use these long ass pliers. Look, I know it's hard to believe when one of my plans comes together, but it worked. I was able to cram a socket through the sending unit hole and grab a hold of the inside and then I turn this with the crescent wrench and it it just worked. I guess I can get the tank out of the way now. The next step is something I've been looking forward to for a while. I mean years since I saw this stuff come out. So what we have here is Holly Hydromat. Here is why I thought this was so cool that I had to have it in the build. You can see it comes in a bunch of different shapes, configurations. I went with this. It's a cross. And I went with this because I plan on laying it kind of sideways in the gas tank. If any little piece of this mat touches the fuel, the pump will be able to pull from it. This will ensure that we don't fuel starve under normal operating conditions. And it's pretty straightforward. It's just a 3 8 NPT. Got an adapter from Summit Racing that converts it to 8 AN. And then we'll take some of our 8 AN PTFE line, make us a short little hose that can go from the hydromat to the other end which is this, which will plug into that bulkhead fitting we just put in the gas tank. And to keep the hydromat from sloshing around, Holly sells these little magnet kits. Nothing too crazy. So you can see the hydromat's got these little holes in the corners. Just put the foot through there, get your washer, get you one of these little lock nuts. And that's it. Oh, and another really cool thing about the Hydromat, it does function as the pre-pump filter. So we'll go straight from the 8AN out of the tank into our new Holly fuel pump. So the fuel pump we're gonna go with is a Holly HP High Flow 12-890. This should be able to handle just about anything we want to do. And then the post filter pump, I got this Earl's 10 micron. Everything I've purchased for this part of the project is compatible with E85. We do plan on running ethanol. Here's, here's the plan anyway. These ORB to 8AN fittings came from JEGS. No clue where this fitting in between came from. All of these AeroQuip PTFE hose fittings came from Summit. And these things are like 
20, 30 bucks a piece. So I really hope I counted right. We'll have fuel lines coming in and going out. I'm gonna try to fish the fuel lines through the frame rails and we'll come right up to the back of the fuel rails here with a 90, we'll come down, go through our little crossover we made, back out from the back of the passenger fuel rail. We'll go into this little contraption. This is one of the first pieces I bought for this build. This is the Motion Race Works flex fuel sensor holder. I don't know. Breaks into two parts. It comes apart so we can slide our sensor in right there. And then you got your little mounting plate here that holds the contraption together. And then we'll go out of this. Into this. How's this work? Like that. So this is where we have to make some decisions. Fuel will come in one side for the sake of argument. Let's say this side. We will block the other side off because we don't need it in the configuration that I have chosen. The return comes out the bottom. And then from here, we'll just go straight back to the tank. And I already talked to you about how I'm gonna do that. So pretty straightforward. The only other thing, we're gonna, we need a, we need a gauge. Come on. So here's where I'm at. I'm gonna do one of two things. Option one is just take this aeromotive gauge and put it straight into the front of this. That will be nice. The other option is to use this guy and then I can shove my gauge in right here, but it gives me the opportunity to do something else. It's the Holly fuel pressure sensor, 554-102. If I do it in this configuration, I can use one of the inputs on the Holly Terminator to monitor fuel pressure and I can do some things with that. Uh, the only other thing, uh, since this is going to be a forced induction configuration, we got, a, we got a vacuum line here. And what that does is reduces fuel pressure at idle. This is too big. So what I need to do is see, because I'm, I'm hoping to use all these little push, push to connect fittings on everything with airlines. Let me have to see if I can find a little bitty. Golly, what would that be, 16th? This is eighth. Yeah, I'll figure that out. That's how the fuel system is gonna be set up. I'm gonna get to work on it. Okay, I apologize for the detour, but I got distracted. We're gonna very carefully clean out this lower A-arm, get the ball joint, the bushings, and the sway bar link out. And the key here is to be careful. You don't wanna damage anything. Hey, welcome to a new segment on my channel. It's called Just the Tip and Only for a Minute. My tip for you today is that if you are going to set out to build something absurd, 
that you can't buy parts off the shelf for, then you need to get very good at CAD. And by CAD, of course, I mean cardboard-aided design. I've been snipping on some cardboard to get this plate fixed up here so I have something to mount my fuel pump on. This is going to go on that, that truss that I built between the coil towers in the back. And that's it. Just the tip and only for a minute. So really, the only thing I have left on the fuel system is making hoses and connecting stuff. And I imagine you don't care to see all of that, so I'm just not going to show it. Uh, when it's done, I'll give you a little tour. But for now, uh, while I'm waiting on some hose ends to come in the mail, let's get some wiring done. This, of course, is the Holley Terminator X ECU. It is the 550-909. I ordered this and got it in like three days. I see a lot of people are complaining that it's taken months to get them. I don't really know what the problem is. Uh, this is not the Max because I don't need the Max. We're not running a computer-controlled transmission. Uh, here's the ECU itself. I'm actually quite excited because... This is the factory ECU out of the olds. As you can see, Terminator X is smaller, which means this should fit behind the passenger kick panel where the factory ECU was. This particular model did come with the three and a half inch display, which is pretty cool. You can customize this, put a tachometer, your fuel pressure, oil pressure, whatever, do whatever you want with this. And I gotta be honest, the rest of this is a little overwhelming. But we got to start somewhere. So I figure we'll start here with the injector harness. I don't know if you can see this, but every little wire has a label on the heat shrink. This says injector eight, which will be in the back here, far back on the passenger. Six. Four, two, and same deal on this side. Seven, five. Three, one. I did purchase a can splitter and a USB cable. I'm planning on hooking this up to the dash so I can just plug my laptop straight into the dash instead of fishing under there for wires. But we'll, uh, we'll set this back on the shelf. I don't need it right now. Everything is very clearly labeled. Connect a cylinder head only. Oil pressure, cam sensor, fuel, ignition, even side, map sensor, TPS, ignition odd. So I'm gonna mess with this. So all in all, this went fine. The biggest issue is that I don't have coil harnesses, so I'm gonna have to order those. Also, I do not have manifold air temperature sensor. Didn't even think about that, so I'm gonna have to order one of those. I cannot connect main power to the ECU until the front of the car is back on because I gotta have my battery wherever it's gonna go. And then I can work on my inputs and outputs and all these other just random wires that go various places. But the point is we're close. We got a whole lot done in this video, but I'm missing parts. I already checked, nothing's back ordered. So I'll go ahead and order those today. They'll be here in a couple of days. I'll get it done. Um, hopefully in the next video, 
start putting the front of the car back together, get everything hooked up electrically, and then we can start on all this, all this plumbing up front. If you like this project, please be sure to like, subscribe, ring the bell, share the video with your friends, tell them all about this idiot out in the country in Indiana that's putting all this time and effort and money into this car so they can enjoy the shenanigans as well. We're getting very close. I thank you for sticking around. Please don't be a jerk.